the Ruger GP100, let's check it out. Guys, in 1985, the Ruger GP100 was introduced, and that was when revolvers were king. Law enforcement carried predominantly revolvers in 357 Magnum, and of course backups in 38. But the revolver was reliable, and during that time, the 357 Magnum was an excellent round for self-defense. So Ruger replaced the Security 6 in their revolver lineup with the GP100, and taking a lot of cues from the Ruger Red Hawk. Uh, this is one of the strongest 357 Magnums in the world. There are a lot of features on this revolver that make it super strong. It's built like a tank, and we're going to take a look at the reasons why. And this is one of the earlier models with the wood inserts on the grip. Uh, these are still being produced today with Hogue grips, but I'll tell you what, guys, this to me is the one I've been looking for for a long time. So when I found it in my local gun shop, I immediately had to pick it up. And honestly, it was twice the price it was in 1985, even used. GP100 has been produced again since 1985, so it's almost 30-year-old design. And this is actually the second generation to the Security 6, which was Ruger's standby 357 Magnum revolver. Uh, but this is a much more beefier, uh, much stronger action, and we'll take a look at some of the reasons why. Of course push button here to release your cylinder and the gun is definitely unloaded. Uh, and one of the big things about the GP100 is that they wanted something that would withstand really high pressure rounds. I mean you can shoot any kind of 357 Magnum in this handgun because of the way it's designed. Uh, one of the big reasons, and we'll go ahead and look at that, is when you open up the crane, typically uh, the crane was held into place from a small detent here at the front of the ejector rod. And that was fine, but it didn't give it as much strength as it does if it's right here inside the crane. You can see this little push button. This locks the crane into place. So as you close it down, it gets the action or the retention back here toward the cylinder. And so that gives it a much stronger action here with your cylinder, with the crane fit. And so that makes it just a much more superior design. Now, one of the big things about the GP100 is it actually got its uh, inspiration from the Red Hawks. Uh, the Ruger Red Hawks and the Super Red Hawks are just phenomenal. I mean, they can handle any load that you can about put in them. I mean, they're just built like tanks. And a lot of those features came to the GP100. And for that matter, the SP01. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it looks like, to me, a little bulldog. Now, this is the 4-inch model. Uh, it did come in a 3-inch, which is not quite as popular. Uh, and then they have the 6-inch. The 6-inch is going to give you more velocity. Uh, it's going to allow you to kind of shoot long, longer ranges. Better, really, for a hunting pistol. Uh, but for me, uh, I had one of the 4-inches back in the early 90s, and so I wanted a 4-inch model. Now this is the older version, so it has these grips. They're called Santaprene, and uh, it's just really a soft, recoil-absorbing material. And for those really high-pressure loads, this really absorbs that recoil really nice, and it gives you a good, firm grip on the handgun. And then with the wood inserts, uh, which there were a couple of different kinds, and I believe this one's rosewood. But now they're made with the Hogue grips. And guys, I was really looking for this model because this is just the one that I had before. I like the full shroud that goes on the barrel. It gives it a little more weight at the front, and so when you're shooting it, it just makes it that much more comfortable to shoot. Uh, this one does have the adjustable sights, which some did come with fixed sights, but I love the adjustable 
sights on the rear and the course just black outline on the front. This is a double action revolver and that means that when you pull the trigger you see the hammer come back. Uh, now you can fire it single action in this position here and it's a really crisp trigger pull. But there are some things about the trigger action to me on the Ruger that are really appealing. Now really the proper way to shoot a double action revolver is to pull the trigger through with the hammer down. But one of the things about this is it's long and it's typically heavy. When you pull it back for single action, it's a really short, very easy to get more on target. Uh, you're not going through that long pull. And so for target, or if I really want to get a long shot, just pull that hammer back and then I have that really light trigger pull. But one of the beautiful things about the Ruger in particular is that when you pull that hammer back, it's long, it's smooth, then it kind of goes into a click about right here, which would be like single action. And then you can fire it. So it almost gives you the best of both worlds with the trigger action. And man, again, it is super smooth. Smooth like butter. Now push in your cylinder release and just pop your cylinder out. Uh, right here is your ejector rod, and this is going to get those spent shells out fairly quickly. Uh, one thing, of course, with a revolver is, you know, the magazine capacity, or obviously the capacity of the cylinder, uh, is only six. Now, they did make the 44 Special with five, and they went all the way up to 22 with 10 rounds. And then there's some in between. There's a number of calibers that this was made in. And um, I think even 10 millimeter, which I think would be a really cool option. And in fact, I think it's seven rounds of 10 millimeter. But you can get speed loaders, and if you really practice, you can get pretty quick with them. And law enforcement proved that over the years. Now, this handgun was actually issued to the Border Patrol and to the Immigration and Naturalization Service in the early 90s. This was their issued sidearm. And then, of course, they went to the 40 caliber about 1996. Uh, this was also used by a number of different countries for special forces with Greece, Serbia, and the UK. Uh, and so this handgun has a lot of popularity worldwide. And one of the big reasons is just because of the strength of the action. Now as far as safety goes, number one, it is a double action pistol. So you've got to really mean to pull that hammer back. But if you'll notice right here, there is a transfer bar. You'll see it coming up and it blocks the action of the firing pin. And this is going to keep this drop safe as well. Uh, you know, if you drop this firearm and it hits on the hammer, if it has a firing pin that's on the hammer, which really, they kind of did away with that back in the 70s. If you'll see a lot of the older Smith & Wessons that have that firing pin that come out. And so this actually keeps the firing pin from breaking, which is also another problem with that exposed firing pin. Of course, the heavy shroud here and at the top, it really gives this a solid look. And you can look at the top. Now, and there are serrations right here. They cut down on glare. And then, of course, the black with this sight. These have been around, again, for 29 years. There's a ton of holster options. There's a, t there's a ton of sight options, grip options. I mean, you can get a lot of different things, a lot of aftermarket support. Now, the GP100 not only came in this stainless, but it also came in a blued version as well. Uh, the blued version was actually discontinued a number of years ago, and the stainless, again, is still available. Now, one of the big pluses of the GP100 is the grip design. And we're gonna go ahead and remove these grips. It's a real small screw right here. It just drops the, actually the panels out. Then we have a plug and you can push it through. I'm going to take our screwdriver and just pop it. And that keeps the grip into place. Now once we take this off, we have a rectangular peg design. Now the big advantage to this is that we can put on a square butt, but we can also put a round butt grip on here, especially for concealed carry. If you want to kind of bring that down, uh, this allows for you to transition. A lot of times with the Smith & Wessons, they were either square butt or round butt. And so you were kind of stuck with either one. With this, if I want to get a round butt you know, grip, I can put that on and uh, it really fits nice. And then if I want the full size grip, which I really would want, especially shooting full magnum loads, this is really comfortable. And one thing you're going to notice is this small little brass pin. And this actually, there's a little cavity that it fits into. So when you pull your panel off, this little pin is going to fall out. And this is a disassembly pin. Now, if you want to look and see how to disassemble the GP100, I mean, you can go to the Ruger website and they have tech tips. It's really simple. 
uh, and it does break into three parts, but we're not going to get into that today. But let's drop our pin in the slot, and then we're going to take this side and go ahead and get it into place. So that'll retain that pin. You go ahead and push up on the grip, get it into place here, and then we can put in this little peg or slug, just like that. Put our grip back on, screw it on. Let's check double action trigger pull with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Nine pounds, 7.4 ounces. And that's about what we were getting the whole time. Single action, five pounds, 5.8 ounces. And that is pretty consistent with what we were getting. And the weight of the GP100 four inch, two pounds, 7.4 ounces. This is not a light handgun. In fact, as Hickok said, you can use this as a boat anchor. <laughs> Now we have some 38 Special. This is 130 grain full metal jacket. We're going to try some of the 38 Specials. Uh, this is Fiocchi ammunition. And then we're also going to be using one of their 158 grain. And this is the CMJ, uh, 1220 feet per second. And we're also going to be doing some other more high powered, but um, we're just going to test this out for initial testing. There's something about taking a revolver to the range that just really slows things down. Uh, it's a totally different experience than when you're shooting a semi-automatic, especially the high-capacity polymer frame striker fire pistols. Uh, you know, there's just something about that double action, smooth trigger pull or, you know, single action. Just bring it back. Uh, it's a very versatile handgun and it's very reliable. And that's one of the reasons why uh, police units all over the world carried these for a long time. You know, there were a lot of nine millimeters out there, but nine millimeter really hadn't come into its own as a self-defense round until much later. And the 357 Magnum at that time was king. And one thing about the GP100 is you could load this thing up to the max. Now it's really soft shooting, it's fairly heavy, and so the recoil really is fairly light. Now unfortunately I left my full house power loads for my 357 Magnum at home. Uh, we did have the Fiocchi 357 Magnum which is moving pretty fast. And it gave us an idea between the 38 Special and the 357 Magnum, but it was such a pleasure to shoot because of the weight. And you know, that shroud at the front too, it gives the barrel enough weight. I mean, this is not a light firearm, but it's definitely comforting with this caliber, uh, and especially with the capability that this gun has. Now, while revolvers, as far as for self-defense, have gotten to be more old school, uh, the kids really enjoyed shooting it because of the weight, because of the recoil, and it really surprised them how much they liked it. Uh, it's just, again, it just slows things down. It makes it smooth. You have that full double action trigger pull, and of course you can shoot it single action as well. And uh, it just gives you a lot of options. And so if you don't have a good 357 Magnum revolver, I mean, this one is my personal favorite. And the accuracy is not shabby either. Pros and cons, uh, you can shoot about any kind of 357 Magnum through this handgun. It is built like a tank. It is solid. The lockup design, the heavy frame, no side plate. Uh, you can take the grip and put a round butt on here easy enough, which makes it really nice, especially if you were going to carry this concealed. But gets to our next point, this is a very heavy firearm. And so it's going to be a little difficult to carry. Uh, could do it for open carry, but for concealed carry, there are guys that can do it, but I'm not one of them. Smooth, super smooth trigger pull all the way through. And again, I really like how it kind of hesitates right there to be able to get that good single action feel to it. Sights are excellent. And again, you've got different barrel lengths. Uh, the grips are really nice, but then again, you can get the hoe grips that are more modern. So really, there are no cons to this pistol. It's really more or less, what are you going to use it for? and that really falls into whatever your needs are. Uh, but for me, this is a perfect 357 revolver, and uh, I'm really excited about finally having one of these GP100s. So guys, if you go into a local gun shop and you see those revolvers over in the counter and you just think, that's old school, that was for a different time, I think you'll be surprised at how much fun a revolver can be. Again, it just changes your shooting experience at the range. And I think you'll find a lot of pleasure in taking an old 
double action, single action revolver out and putting some rounds through it, especially if you get those high velocity magnum loads. Plus it gives you some capability that semi-autos just can't match, unless you have a 10 millimeter. And I wanna thank myself for buying the GP100. This has been awesome. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. <laughs> now you will notice right here that when we pull, now as far as the safe go, you might want to hurry because the battery's almost dead. Okay. All right. We have some Fiocchi 138 grain. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I lost. Now, unfortunately. <laughs> now, if I, if I, if I, if I, make a good video.